The Wellington Eye Clinic was established in 1980. Since 2006, it has been located at the state-of-the-art Beacon Medical Campus in Sandyford, Dublin, close to the M50 and the Lewis. The clinic has a special interest in laser eye surgery, cataract surgery and keratoconus. This DVD is designed to inform patients about keratoconus and the treatment options available. We are very fortunate to have amongst the staff my partner, Dr. Arthur Cummings, who performed the first corneal cross-linkage procedure in 2007. We regard the treatment of keratoconus at the Wellington Clinic as being a team approach. We are indeed fortunate to have the services of Claire Maguire, who's a very experienced optometrist and has more than 10 years experience of fitting contact lenses for keratoconic patients in Oxford and Birmingham and now for the last three years in Dublin. Keratoconus is a corneal dystrophy that you're basically born with but it manifests in your late teens typically. It tends to be progressive. It affects 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 2,000 people. What happens is the cornea becomes more conical and more cone-shaped and this distorts the vision. So the very first and best option initially is the use of contact lenses to try and improve the shape of the cornea and hence your vision. Keratoconus is typically progressive and would tend to progress in five to seven year cycles. So it's normally diagnosed in your late teens and then gets progressively worse for approximately seven years and then is relatively stable for five to seven years, then gets worse again. And this cycle of progression continues until approximately 45 to 50. And at this age we tend not to see further progression. At the moment. Niall Corkery, brilliant ball in, he's got away, goal tip! Goal for Bernard Rogan! I realised that one of my eyes had better eyesight than the other, uh, so that's when I sort of realised that my, my eyesight wasn't uh, what it used to be. So then I just went to the opticians and uh, they diagnosed me with astigmatism and with keratoconus. Uh, first notice I had uh, keratoconus would have been about 10 years ago. Um, the prescription of my glasses seemed to fluctuate quite a bit between visits to the optician. Um, so my optician actually suspected that I might have had keratoconus. So um, he actually sent me to see a consultant just to confirm that the condition was present and it uh, was. I first noticed a problem in my eyes in the last couple of years with a general deterioration in uh, conditions like basic things like being able to watch a match on the television or actually being at a match or a lot of my work involves driving so going home from work with oncoming traffic. And as a result of that I went to see my local optician who suspected I may have the condition and referred me to the Wellington Eye Clinic. So typically the treatment for keratoconus would start off with spectacles and then possibly soft contact lenses but often the keratoconus gets too advanced and the patient will need or GP contact lenses or rigid contact lenses. How I often explain keratoconus to the patient is it's like looking through a distorted bathroom window and no matter how strong spectacles they wear, they still can't see through it. How the contact lens works is kind of your cornea is conical shape and the contact lens presses on the cone, smooths the surface and therefore you can see again. At the Wellington Eye Clinic we have the full spectrum of treatments available to best manage your keratoconus. This includes very specialist keratoconus contact lens fitting. As well as all the surgical options. These include corneal cross-linking, Intax and SimLC. It's the only procedure out there that has the ability to stop the progression of keratoconus and in some cases even improve the keratoconus. Keratoconus is a condition where the corneal fibers are not held together tightly enough and because the, the fibers are quite loose, they've got the ability to slide over one another. Many keratoconus sufferers rub their eyes and the combination of rubbing on the eye and the intraocular pressure allows these fibers to slip over one another and the cone forms. So with cross-linking, if we can first of all just stop the progression, that's already success. And this we achieve in 100% of patients, we slow down the progression. In 95% of patients, we can actually stop the progression completely. And in 70% of patients, we have the ability to improve the corneal shape and hence the vision.
At the Wellington Eye Clinic, we think there are two indications for cross-linking. The first one is for the person who's been recently diagnosed. Their condition is progressive, they know it's getting worse, and instead of watching it get worse, we figure it makes a lot of sense to try and stop it getting worse now while the patient still has useful vision. So that's the first indication. It would typically be the younger keratoconus patient. The second indication is in the advanced keratoconus patient where basically they can't wear their contact lenses anymore either due to discomfort or because we cannot fit a lens because the cornea has, shape has got so steep. Um, hopefully by doing the cross-linking at this stage it may actually prevent them from needing a corneal transplant because the shape may improve which will aid contact lens fitting. So that's quite interesting. You've heard Claire say that doing cross-linking, in fact, makes fitting the contact lens easier in many cases. So the patient might be able to go back to wearing contact lenses again and hence avoid the corneal transplant. In the rare event, however, that corneal transplant is still indicated, at least now you are transplanting the donor cornea into a cross-linked cornea, which is a much stronger cornea, and the recurrence of keratoconus in the new cornea should be greatly reduced because of this cross-linking. I was referred to the Wellington Eye Clinic and they suggested the corneal cross-linkage. Um, after I did a bit of research myself, I decided that uh, this is probably the best option for me. After local anaesthetic has been installed, the surface epithelium of the cornea is gently removed or peeled back, exposing the undersurface. Riboflavin, which is vitamin B2, is then dropped onto the surface of the stroma and over a period of 20 to 30 minutes it soaks through the stroma like a sponge. Then we switch on the ultraviolet source. It is a combination of the ultraviolet light acting on the riboflavin which releases the high energy bonds which cause the linking of the collagen fibers in the cornea. The ultraviolet light is on for 30 minutes. It's a specific time and a specific energy that allows the process to occur safely without any damage to the interior structures. Once that has proceeded and has finished, the eye is then cleaned and a soft bandage contact lens is inserted. After that, you're free to go home and uh, you'll be using drops, antibiotic drops, for approximately seven to ten days. So on the day of surgery I went in, um, I was in the clinic for about uh, two hours, an hour to two hours. Um, the procedure itself was completely painless. Um, you're, given, you're, you're, you're awake during it and you're given a, a local anaesthetic and it looks like almost that there, there's, a, there's like a pane of glass in front of your eye at which they're um, which are putting drops on, so you don't feel anything. It's quite a surreal experience, actually, but it's, uh, it's, it's not that bad. Uh, afterwards, it's, uh, there is quite a bit of discomfort for the, for the rest of the day and uh, the day afterwards, but I was given uh, plenty of uh, painkillers to, uh, to deal with that. Um, for the left eye, um, I probably had about four hours of pain after procedure and probably just a wee little bit the next morning. Um, for the most part, after that, I had no problems at all. What we hope to achieve with cross-linking is to stop the keratoconus from progressing. This we achieve in 95% of eyes. In the other 5% of eyes, we slow down the progression, but there may still be some progression. In 70% of eyes, we in fact see an improvement in the corneal shape. When we do see an improvement, it is typically two or three diopters of shape improvement, and we need to have 400 microns of tissue available in order to do cross-linking, we can, for corneas that are thinner than 400 microns, we can swell them preoperatively in order to allow cross-linking to take place. After you've had the cross-linking procedure, you can expect your eyes to be a little bit uncomfortable and light sensitive. In some cases, it can be rather severe and you may need to take some pain tablets, but it usually is self-limiting and lasts for 24 to 48 hours. And there is a possibility that there might be a reactivation of a herpes virus if you've had that previously. And in some cases, particularly if you've had cold sores or you get cold sores on a regular basis, we may have to give you some prophylaxis before, during and after the procedure.
Corneal cross-linking can be done on its own. It can also be combined when intacts are placed in the eye. These are little rings that are placed into the cornea and flatten the cone, and then the cross-linking is done to fix this new shape in space. And the third option is called SIMLC, and this is where we use laser in a topography-guided mode just to improve the shape of the cornea, and then the cross-linking is used to fix this new shape in time. One hundred percent of patients here see an improvement in quality of vision and an improved corneal shape. And when they do see this improvement, it's approximately five to six diopters of improvement. Similar C is still in an experimental phase, so we don't do this for all our patients at all, but approximately only 25% of patients. After the procedure, I met Claire in here in the Wellington Eye Clinic and, and she fitted me with contact lenses, which have really been great for me. I've been able to um, enjoy going to matches uh, where I can see the ball far more clear than I could a couple of years ago, so that's been really enjoyable in the last year. And also simple things like driving and seeing a computer at work have been far easier as a result of the procedure. After my procedure, my lifestyle changed dramatically. I can study longer without getting migraines. And especially now that I recently found out I can go for my provisional license, which is great because I no longer have to rely on my parents to drive me. Often patients are concerned that they can't wear lenses after they have had the cross-linking treatment, but they absolutely can. Often in the clinic we make sure that they wait six weeks after the treatment to, just to ensure that the eye is settled down before we start refitting with contact lenses. Sometimes patients are concerned that they're having their best eye treated and they won't be able to see with the other eye. But in, that, in the meantime, we're very happy to fit a contact lens in the eye that's not having the treatment done and therefore they'll be able to see with the other eye. Uh, my life and work it was actually starting to impact my job as well. Um, the eyesight is actually quite important to the line of work that I'm in. Um, so after the procedure was done on both eyes, there was an immediate change there. Job became much easier, uh, much easier to pick up little small things that I would have had problems with before. Um, the contact lenses that I have now are much more comfortable than what I would have had uh, two years previously. Um, I get much longer wear time from them, uh, much greater degree of comfort and just much less hassle all around really. Before I had to wear um, hard contact lenses uh, which I really didn't like and, but after now I can wear soft contact lenses which is, a, which is a huge bonus for me. It hasn't improved my vision now but I'd certainly recommend it as it, uh, it's, it, it stopped the deterioration of my eye. If you don't have your keratoconus treated with cross-linking, usually the keratoconus will continue to progress. However, this does depend on your age. The younger the patient, the worse the prognosis. So usually the more advanced the keratoconus gets. At the clinic, or in any other clinic, who fit keratoconic patients, they'll be happy to continue fitting you with specialist contact lenses. However, it may reach a point where you're unable to wear the lenses anymore and then corneal transplant surgery is indicated. This is not the case in every patient. There are certain conditions uh, in which a patient may not be suitable to have corneal cross-linkage. One is where the surface epithelium of the corneas are abnormal. A second uh, uh, potential complication is in patients who have had previous herpes simplex, uh, in other words, the cold sore uh, virus has affected the cornea. Another condition uh, which can affect the corneal cross-linkage recovery is patients who have rheumatoid. And the patients who are pregnant are certainly not suitable to have the procedure. At the Wellington Eye Clinic, we provide a specialist contact lens fitting service for keratoconics. We can either fit the lenses after they've had the cross-linking done, or in many cases, we often fit the lenses before they have cross-linking done, in patients who may not qualify for the surgery or who are not happy to go ahead with the procedure. The benefits of having corneal cross-linkage, the first thing is the knowledge that the condition has now been stabilized and is not going to get worse. 
And that means that you can carry on in your lifestyle without the worry that things are actually going to get worse and your vision is going to get worse. The second thing is that it is going to save you from the possibility of having further corneal surgery or a corneal transplant. And with the limitations and conditions associated with corneal graft surgery today, that is a significant advantage. Initially for the first few days after surgery, your eye is quite sore, so the vision is quite blurred. And then for the first month or so, it's quite unstable. What you may find, however, is that the uncorrected vision improves. So without your glasses, you are seeing slightly better, even though that's not the indication for surgery. What typically happens too, is you may become slightly more short-sighted. If the procedures work well, the cone is going to move upwards and make you more short-sighted. And this would typically give you a better quality of vision once you correct it. Well, what I found is because the cone migrates upwards, we've actually found that contact lens fitting is much easier. And also, usually, the best corrected vision improves, so the patient's delighted because they have better vision than they had previously. Corneal cross-linking has been around for just over 10 years now and was CE approved, that means approved in the European Union, in January of 2007. And that's exactly when we started doing it at the Wellington Eye Clinic. The procedure is for keratoconus patients. It is not to make you see better without glasses or without contact lenses. And you must realize that you will be required to wear glasses. You may need special contact lens fitting after the procedure for perfect vision. In some cases, however, you will be surprised at how well your vision improves just with cross-linkage alone. With cross-linking, we strengthen especially the upper levels of the cornea. And if you were not going to do laser, you would go and remove those very fibers that you've strengthened. So we don't like the idea of doing laser afterwards. This is where SimLC comes in. In SimLC, you do the laser first, and then once you have the improved shape, you then go and cross-link this shape and cement this new improved shape in time. As far as we can tell, this is a once-off procedure that you won't need doing again. The inventor of the procedure has been doing this for 11 years, and he has one patient that he did cross-link a second time. At the moment, medical insurance does not cover corneal cross-linking. However, it is under review, and we are hoping that once it gets FDA approval in America, that the insurance companies will cover the cost. As we speak, the FDA trial is ongoing. Already 18 months have been completed, and the findings are just as we have found in Europe. There are now 800 clinics in Europe offering cross-linking, and everyone is of the same opinion that it is absolutely the best thing that, that we've ever encountered for patients with keratoconus.